This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Let's now have a look at the world of borrowing costs. Again, it's another standard that you've seen previously at F7 level. It was a very small part of F7, wasn't it? Uh, you were maybe lucky enough to get part of a question containing it. Uh, but other than that, it was very rarely seen. It, it has to be said, it's still rarely seen at P2 level. Okay, uh, But... That doesn't mean to say we can ignore it. We need to have knowledge of it just in case it is to arise, isn't it? So remember what borrowing costs are all about. Uh, you have, first of all, taken out a specific loan uh, to finance the construction of an asset. So what goes through and happens is that then any interest that you incur, instead of going through and debiting your finance costs, you can go through there and debit the cost of the asset, can't we? So what we've got there. Uh, if you look at the notes that you have up there, uh, it says borrowing costs, uh, net of income received. So that's the first thing to consider. Uh, you take out a loan. Uh, when you take out the loan, uh, you incur interest. However, you might borrow a significant amount of money to fund the whole project, but you may not need all of those funds immediately. So you incur the full amount of interest because you've got the full amount of borrowings. But what you then do is you then invest some of that money. Uh, and when you invest some of that money, you get interest income. So any interest expense, you take the interest income and net them off. And it is the net amount that is capitalized. OK, uh, it then goes through and is applied to a qualifying asset. Uh, by definition, a qualifying asset is an asset that takes a substantial period of time to go through and construct. Uh, and the key bit now is that it must be capitalised. So in the old days, you had the choice of whether or not you capitalised or not, which reduced the comparability between entities. If one entity capitalised the asset, they would have higher interest, or if you like, sorry, if one entity capitalised the interest, they would have a higher value of the asset and therefore a higher depreciation charge compared to a company that didn't capitalise the interest would therefore then have a lower depreciation charge but a higher interest expense. And that could have impacts on profitabilities, couldn't it? If it impacts profitability, then that will ultimately impact earnings per share and can ultimately impact your price earnings ratio. So to ensure comparability, so going back to the framework, uh, to ensure comparability, you now have to capitalise the interest. Okay, when you meet the criteria. So, first of all, we look at when capitalization starts. Uh, so, again, it's fairly logical. Capitalization starts when the is expenditure. So, uh, you are buying the materials. You are incurring expense with regards to the labor force. Uh, it goes without saying that there has to be, there are borrowing costs being incurred. Because if there's no borrowing cost, there is nothing to capitalize. So, that's a bit obvious, isn't it? Uh, and the key one, I think, the most important one, is that there are the activities taking place, okay? Uh, because if you're incurring expenditure, maybe you're buying the materials, uh, you've taken out the loan, uh, it's the activities that then determine when it starts, okay? Uh, so what we tend to have there is that it is usually starting based on our date at the latest possible scenario, because we don't want to be too prudent, do we? Okay, yeah, it's not prudent to capitalise an expense. So we don't really want to capitalise it until it is actually able to be capitalised, which is at the latest date. Okay, uh, we then go through there and we will stop the capitalisation uh, when it is ready for use. Okay. Uh, again, that tends to be there, if you like, when it's ready for use. It tends to be the, the earliest date. So again, erring on the side of prudence. Okay. Uh, so we look at when it is ready for use as opposed to being used. Because when it's ready for use, that's when the activities are likely to have stopped, isn't it? Okay. Uh, just note there is an or situation. Uh, if there is no active construction... Uh, so usually we're talking there about maybe a strike or maybe very bad weather that was unexpected. Uh, then there will be no activities taking place and therefore 
we don't meet the criteria for capitalization okay so therefore you would go back to expensing the interest okay uh, just be careful uh, you have now seen financial instruments at amortized cost haven't you at f7 uh, and you've also seen borrowing costs at f7 so you're now aware aren't you that when you look at a financial instrument so a loan uh, at amortized cost the rate of interest that is charged to profit or loss is based upon the effective rate within the loan isn't it okay not the coupon rate so when you're looking at the interest that is capitalized you are using the effective rate of interest however that only applies to specific borrowings i.e when you're taking out a loan to fund a construction project okay we will look at general borrowings a little bit afterwards okay so let's go through that uh, and have a look is it at the example number four to do with specific borrowings uh, so it goes through there, doesn't it? And says, calculate the amount of interest to be capitalised uh, as part of the non-current assets. Uh, Columbia commenced the construction of an item of PPE on the 1st of March 2015 and funded it with a $10 million loan, which had a rate of interest, is it there, of 5%. Okay. There we go. So from March all the way there to assuming December is at our year end. Uh, that's March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So that's 10 months, isn't it? OK. However, do just be careful. Uh, due to a strike, no construction took place between the 1st of October and the 1st of November. So what you've got there is that you've got is it five percent is the loan amount on the 10 million but you are only going to capitalize it is it for nine months okay yeah because even though the first of march to the end of december is 10 months for one month the first of october to the first of november yeah so the start of november not the end so it's one month not two uh we only capitalize nine months So, therefore, the amount of interest to be capitalised is $0.375 million. Okay. Uh, that one month, so one twelfth of 5% of $10 million will be expensed through profit or loss. But it doesn't ask you that within the question. Okay. It just wants you to look at what's capitalised, not what is expensed. Okay. So, we capitalised nine months. One month is expensed. Okay. Excellent. Uh, if we then just move it on to your general borrowings, uh, with general borrowings, uh, all that happens there is that you have maybe a centralised treasury function that has a pool of loans. You are a subsidiary that is constructing an asset and you need to borrow some funds. So you borrow some funds from the pool of funds in the central treasury department. There is no specific borrowings. So you have general borrowings. The issue that you have there is what rate of interest do you apply to the borrowings that you have taken out? All you go through and do there is that if you have general borrowings, then you just look at a weighted average rate of interest. Okay, weighted based upon the value of the loan. Okay, so uh, let's go through there first of all and have a look at the, the scenario. Uh, so again, same requirement, the amount of interest to be capitalised. Again, we're going to assume that it's a 31st of December year end. Uh, and it says Venezuela had the following loans in issue. It had a 25 million 4% loan and a 40 million 3% loan. So we need to work out what the weighted average percentage is on those figures, don't we? Okay. Uh, once we've got that percentage, we can then apply that to the borrowings that they took out. So it says, Venezuela commenced the construction of an item of property, plant and equipment on the 1st of Jan 2015, for which it used its existing borrowings. Uh, and it says there, 10 million of expenditure was used on the 1st of January. So is that 10 million for 12 months? And 15 million on the 1st of July. So is that 15 million for six months? Okay. The percentage that we are going to apply is 
that weighted average percentage, isn't it? So if we go through that and look at the weighted average. So what we've got there is we have, is it two loans? Uh, was it the uh, one loan? Was the, I think, was it at 25 million? The other was at 40 million. So we have 65 million in total borrowed. Uh, the interest, so what have we got? Was it a 4%, I think, and 3%? Let's just check it the right way around. Yeah, 4% and 3%. You can see it there at the bottom, can't we? Okay. So 4% on the 25 and 3% on the 40. Now, I would expect our weighted average to be closer to 3 because we have more borrowings on the 3% loan, don't we? So 4% of 25 is there as 1. 3% uh, of 40 is 1.2. So we have, is it 2.2 million of interest on borrowings of 65? So 2.2 interest divided by 65 multiplied by 100%. Uh, works out there is that 3.38%. That's the weighted average that I would then apply to the amount of borrowings that I then took out. Okay. So what you've got there is I think was it from the 1st of January uh, right the way to the 31st of December. We took out was it $10 million dollars. At 3.38%. And then from the 1st of July to the 31st of December, there was $15 million. Again, we used a 3.38%, but be careful. It is now there, isn't it, for six months. So does that give me there, is it 0.338 million dollars? Uh, 15 times 0.338. Does that give me 0.2535 million? So there we have 0.5915 million. Okay. So the amount to be capitalised is $0.59 million. So instead of debiting the finance cost through profit or loss, you debit the cost of the property, plant and equipment. There you have it. I generally don't think you get anything more complex than either of those two examples. But as we've said, it's an examinable standard that hasn't really been seen within much of the P2 exams. Don't neglect it. Keep working the questions that you've got there. Make sure you're happy with it so that if it does crop up, you'll be one of the few students in the exam hall that will be happy. Other than that, I'll see you all in the next session where we begin to look at government grants.